Okay guys, April is coming up, which means it's time for the Owls Readathon, the Time Topple Readathon, and Avengers Endgame. And I'm going to be theming my reading around all three of these things and taking part in both readathons. So I'm just gonna get right into it and tell you what I'm reading first for the Owls, then Time Topple, and then before Endgame. So Let's get right into it. For my career for the Magical Readathon, I'm going to be aiming for journalist slash writer, not just because it's easy and there's only three prompts that I have to pass to get there in this very, very busy month, but also because it's the closest thing to what I want to be in the muggle world. Despite that though, I do actually have a book for practically every single prompt on this readathon, so I'm just gonna see where it goes. For Ancient Runes, which is the reader retelling, I'm going to be reading Stain because this is supposed to be a Princess and the P retelling where the main character is mute. I know nothing further than that. It, all I know is that it was on my most anticipated reads of 2019 and this just seems like the perfect time to read it. Next for Arithmancy, I have to read a book that was written by more than one author and was there anything I could read apart from Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman here? Good Omens comes out in May. I'm going to be reading this again in May and making a whole load of Good Omens themed content, but I wanted to read this this month, not just because it fit the prompt, but also I need to get my research in before I start filming those themed videos and this is the perfect time to read it. It's also reasonably short, it's like 402 pages. I can get through this really, really quickly. And I'm really excited to read it again. I am so excited to read this again. I'm not taking part in astronomy though because do you think I could find a single book in this house with the word star in the title? I have everything else. I have galaxy, planet, I have basically every other space theme word apart from star in the title. I have books covered in stars on the cover. I just don't have any with the title, which is really, really annoying. So I'm just skipping astronomy for now. If I get a book with star in the title for my birthday, I'll add it in. But right now, I have nothing. Next for Care and Magical Creatures is to read a book with a land animal on the cover. So I'm reading Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1, Communication Breakdown. Because Rocket, as you can see, is on the front cover. It doesn't matter that Rocket is actually from space because he is technically a raccoon, which is a land animal, and I am taking it. Next is Charms, which is focusing on the age line, which is to read an adult book. So I'm going to be reading Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology. Now this is also because it's pre-end game reading because it's about Thor and Norse mythology. And quite frankly, I need to read it now before Thor likely pegs it in the MCU, otherwise, I would spend the entire time reading it crying, so I figured it was probably a good time to read it now before Endgame comes out. The spell for Defense Against the Dark Arts is Reducto, which is to read a book beginning with R. So I'm reading Rat Queens Volume 2 because I love the first volume and quite frankly, with the amount of books I need to read, it's probably a good idea to get some comics in there as well so I can sort of just get through a few more prompts, you know what I mean? For divination, we have to read a book that's set in the future. So I'm going to be reading Testing Pandora, which is set quite far in the future. And it is the prequel to Failure to Communicate, which I loved so much last year. I can't wait to read more about Sandry and where she comes from and how she ends up on the ship with the rest of the crew. Also, it's about 150 pages long, so I can sort of speed through that in an afternoon, which is really useful when I have so many books to read. Next is Herbology, which is to read a book with a flower on the cover, which is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, which I'm reasonably excited to read. I mean, it's quite short, so I could probably get through it quite quickly to add up the amount of passes I've got, but also it's got flower on the cover. It's also a retelling, which means if I don't get to stain, I can use it for the Ancient Runes prompt instead if I have to, which is really good. Next for History of Magic we have to read a book that was published at least 10 years ago so I'm reading Artemis Fowl 4 which is Artemis Fowl and the Opal Deception so this was published in 2005 so that's like 14 years ago so it definitely counts it's safely in the at least 10 years ago sort of area which I'm quite excited for also it's quite short I fly through these books quite quickly again useful because there's so many books. Next is Muggle Studies. I originally wasn't going to do this because it was really contemporary and I don't really do contemporaries, but it is a requirement to be a journalist slash writer. So instead I'm going for A Curse of Dark and Lonely. This is literally the only contemporary-esque thing I've got, so I'm going to have to go for it and bend the rules ever so slightly with this. So please don't kill me because it's literally the only contemporary thing I've got. So 
we're gonna have to make do here. For potions, we're adding the next ingredient, which is to read a sequel. And can I really read anything apart from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire here? Because it's a sequel, but it's also a Harry Potter book. And if I'm reading books in a Harry Potter readathon and I don't read Harry Potter of any description, I'm doing it wrong. I mean, the size of it is a bit of a problem, but at the same time, I did fly through the previous one, and I am fingers crossing, hoping that the same thing happens this time as well. For Transfiguration, we had to read a book that either had sprayed edges or a red cover, and I've gone for the red cover of Secret Invasion, because, again, pre-endgame reading, I feel like this may be the next sort of storyline in the MCU, considering the scrolls have just turned up in Captain Marvel. Also, I needed more comics on this list, and while it is a chunky comic it's still a comic which should only take me a couple of hours to get through which is going to be very very helpful in all of this to get the hours i need to be a journalist slash writer i have to do one subject of choice so i am prioritizing harry potter and the goblet of fire i've also got to read a history of magic which is going to be artemis fowl 4 which is artemis fowl and the opal deception and i've also got to do muggle studies which is a curse so dark and lonely so they're going to be the main ones i am focusing on for this readathon, but I am hoping that I am going to read more than that, fingers crossed. Then for time top, it's basically the same books I have just mentioned, so Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Stain, and also A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Now, I'm going to be prioritising Goblet of Fire and A Curse So Dark and Lonely, but if I get to Stain as well, fantastic. But if I don't, at least I've got the two books I really, really need to read to pass and get my qualifications, or at least start my qualifications, to be a journalist slash writer. Then my pre-endgame reading is going to be all those Marvel comics I have mentioned alongside Norse mythology and these ones. These ones include the sequel to the first Guardians of the Galaxy comic I mentioned which is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Riders in the Sky. Now these two comics actually focus on the storyline of Gamora trying to find the Soul Stone so I probably should have read these pre-Infinity War but obviously I didn't know that that was going to be happening so I'm catching up now with these comics and I really can't wait to read them. I've had them sitting around for like a year now waiting specifically for April and I'm really excited to get to it. Next is a Gamora solo comic which is incredibly short for a graphic novel anyway so I should hopefully be able to fly through this one. This one is Memento Moray and that's literally all I know because it was on my to buy list for a very very long time. I saw it in London in February, snapped it up, still can't remember the actual storyline to this. I'm just excited to read it because I'm convinced that Gamora is actually coming back and she's not actually dead. Next is Civil War 2, despite the fact that I haven't read the first Civil War, simply because this has got Carol Danvers in it, interacting with other Avengers. Now this one is going to be very, very bloody and sort of vicious like I'm expecting, but at the same time I wanted to read something that was about the Avengers and Marvel characters, which included Captain Marvel. So I figured this was a good plan. I don't know if anybody dies, and if they do, I'm considering that an omen for Endgame. Anything I read that has a character from Marvel who die in the comics, I'm going to consider it an omen. So I'm very scared, but dealing with it. Then I've got a couple of Hawkeye related things. The first one being My Life as a Weapon, because I have not read anything with Hawkeye in. I've read basically every other comic character who's in the MCU in comic form, but I haven't really read anything with Hawkeye in so I'd like to rectify that with my life is a weapon. Also I'm going to be reading Kate Bishop's Hawkeye storyline or at least the first volume of it because after that latest Endgame trailer with the girl with the bow and arrow I'm semi convinced that that is Kate Bishop who takes over as Hawkeye when Hawkeye is Ronin and he is clearly Ronin in the film so fingers crossing on that front is that this is going to give me a bit of background to Kate Bishop before the film comes out and if it turns out that the girl in the trailer is not Kate Bishop and is actually Hawkeye's daughter or someone else like I reckon it may be at least I've been introduced to a new Marvel character I knew nothing about before and if I get time on top of all of those other books I may read the first Civil War and the road to civil war because I recently bought the comic and it's probably a good idea to read the road to civil war before civil war the only problem with this is that I know how it ends and I know that it ends in major character death and I'm very very scared considering who actually dies in this comic and the likelihood of them being killed off in Endgame so this isn't officially on the list but I may read it if I get time I don't know it may be an idea anyway to read it beforehand so I understand Civil War 2 in case I don't and also 
if I read it before Endgame and I w read the character death first and then watch it on the big screen, it's probably going to hurt less than if I watch it on the big screen then read this afterwards. So I may read this before, I'm not sure. It's all going to depend on time and how well I'm doing with the owls and everything else. I don't know. And that is everything that I want to read for all these readathons and pre-end games. So what I'm going to do is focus on the books I need to pass to get to the journalist slash writer career and all the comics. If I read more, fantastic. If I don't, at least I've passed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. Comment down below with what you're reading for the Magical Readathon and Tome Topple and pre-end game. I'll also leave a link down below to all of my social media if you want to check out. And if you want to see any more of my videos, please click subscribe here. And over here will be the link to my previous video. But until next time, guys, bye!